Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Red Dirt Rods. Now I wanna to talk to you about car audio today. Now a lot of you probably don't know, but I've spent the last 30 years of my life in the car audio industry. I started out, like many of you, building a system for myself and for my friends, got a job at a stereo shop, ended up being a product designer for Rockford Fosgate for a number of years. Now, the main thing about car audio, the biggest problem that most people face is setting up the gain structure. The gain knob is not a volume knob, even though that's a common misconception. The gain knob is actually a level matching adjustment so that you match the level of output from your head unit to the amplifier. This is important because if it's too low, you're not gonna have very much volume. And if it's too high, you can have a clipped or distorted signal. Plus, the head unit itself maxes out at some point along its volume adjustment. Some head units have zero distortion on the uh, preamp side and distort at lower volumes on the amplifier that's built into the head unit like our four volt Alpine that we have here. I'm gonna show you that here in a minute. Some manufacturers have amp built in amps uh, on their head units that don't distort. So you really have to check every single head unit every single time when you're doing an install because you never know how that head unit is actually going to perform. We're gonna show you all of this so you can set your system up for your project. All right, so let me walk you through our test bench real quick. We've got an Alpine CDA 9813 head unit. This is from around 2002-ish. We've got just a couple of, you know, speakers. These are just random speakers we use for testing. And then I've got a Pioneer GMX322 two-channel amplifier from around the early 2000s as well. We have an oscilloscope, which is this Velman oscilloscope that I've had for about 20 years. You don't need an expensive oscilloscope. You can buy a cheap unit from Amazon for about 40 bucks. It's good enough to do what you need for this kind of project. I've got a few different test leads set up. The other thing that you need for setting your gains is a test tone. You don't use music because music is all over the place. You can't see a, any of the sine waves. You can't see what's actually happening with dynamic music. So you need a sine wave. We are using a one kilohertz sine wave. It's one kilohertz or thousand hertz. That's in the uh, mids and highs region. If you're doing a subwoofer amplifier, you can change that up to 50, 60 hertz. That way you can set the uh, high pass and low pass filters uh, so that you get any noise or anything like that, you can bring that into the system. But for this, we're just using a simple one kilohertz tone and I'm gonna show you guys how to do all of this. So the first thing, you can set your gain structure two ways. You can use an oscilloscope, which is the right way, or you can do it by ear. You can, in some situations, use a multimeter. All you're gonna see is the voltage. You won't be able to see any distortion, and you won't be able to hear any distortion because you won't have speakers hooked up. So there's really only two good ways to do it. I'm gonna show you how to do it by ear, and I'm gonna show you how to do it with the oscilloscope. So first things first, we're gonna take one of these speakers, and we're gonna go ahead and connect in to our head unit. I'm just going to plug in and we're plugging in to the uh, front left output. Okay. So right now we're at 11. I already know that this head unit distorts at 25 on the volume knob. It goes up to 35. So you're losing a third of your volume by using the built-in head unit. So our tone is set to repeat. I want you to listen when it hits 24, and then we're gonna to go to 25 and 26, and you'll hear the sound change. So that's 20, 24, So at 
26, you get that real high-pitched harmonic, that squeal. That's because the amplifier has gone into square wave and it's nothing but distortion. Basically, the wave comes up and instead of being a smooth roll, it comes up and it cuts off and drops. That's distortion. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like right now on our scope. So here on the scope, you can see our amp, our uh, head unit is at 24. This is max volume. This is not a clip signal. And you can see here at the tops of the waveform, they're nice and smooth. So then what we do is turn it up to 25. They're still smooth, but there's a little hiccup right there at the very top. And then we go to 26, and then all of a sudden you see that right there? That is the wave cutting off at the very top. And as we turn this up, the higher we go to max voltage, or max output, now it's a complete square wave. This is nothing but distortion. All this will do is destroy your speakers. It's nothing but heat at this point. Puts a ton of extra energy. Now, if you're doing SPL, you can get a huge boost in, uh, in DB with a square wave, but it will destroy your subs. You do it for a couple of seconds. Uh, for regular listening, you would have to turn this bad boy down to about 24. That's your max voltage. So this head unit, the output from the internal amplifier maxes out in clean signal at about 24 on the volume knob. Let me show you what happens on the preamp side. So I've got this uh, little adapter connected to the front left pre-out. Click right there, and then we're gonna pop this guy in there. And let's go over to the scope. So now let's turn the volume up. We are at 30. So our signal is pretty clean. That's just the CD starting over. So this is max volume right here, 35. We've got nice, clean signal. So this head unit here has four volt pre-outs, nice, clean signal all the way up to the max of the volume knob. Now, there's a couple of caveats to this. We are testing this uh, head unit. Everything is base flat. There's been no EQ adjustment, no filters, uh, no DSP adjustment, none of that stuff, and absolutely never, ever, ever use the loudness. Loudness is basically a distortion button. Don't ever turn it on, uh, especially if you're using uh, head unit power. This thing will probably go down to 19, 18 on the volume knob before if you have the loudness on. So we're doing this all uh, completely flat on the head unit. So at this point, we know where we're at head unit volume wise. We've got a clean signal all the way up. So now we can set our gains on our amplifier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect from the head unit and we're gonna go over here to our amplifier. And I've got this little uh, piece of wire connected to the head unit output, or the amplifier outputs. And I'm just gonna plug in right here. I've got one RCA going to it uh, to, on the left side. Now, I've already connected to it. Let's see what the scope looks like. So our amplifier is connected to the scope. We've, our signal is playing. And we're gonna slowly start turning up the gain knob, watching that wave on the scope now you see what's happening the tops are already cut off our, our track is replaying so now all the adjustment that we're doing is just making it worse so what we do is we slowly back this off there we go so now you can see it watch the top of that see those corners right here watch right there and then you get a sharp peak and then it'll roll off. 
So this right here is on the edge of distortion, right there. That's right, that is distorting. That right there, that's absolute max. And usually what I'll do is I'll just dial it down just a hair to give you a little bit of headroom to make adjustments to your EQ and stuff like that. So that right there is a perfect signal from the head unit to the amplifier and out to your speakers without distortion. And that's all there is to it. This does not take very long to do right, but if you do it wrong, you're gonna burn up your system. All right, now I do wanna show you real quick what music looks like as an electrical signal. So I'm just gonna play a few seconds of this because I don't wanna get a copyright issue on my video, but we've got our scope set up. This is running through the amplifier. So that right there, as you see, everything's all over the place. You can't see a, the signal. It's doing too much, so you can't use that for an oscilloscope. Now you can use that to listen to if you're setting it by ear. Sine wave is still better because you can hear the instant that the signal changes. You don't have to kind of start hearing, listening for muddy sound or you know, slight clipping. You can hear that better with a sine wave. Make sure you guys like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Let's make magic.